Hello, folks. This one's liable to be a little strange. So, fair warning. We're talking about identity and the old who am I thing. Now, I think most of us on a spiritual path, I'll, I'll use that language, I don't like it, but you know, how else do I say, uh, have discovered, even if just for moments here and there, we have discovered that we are consciousness, that we are the ocean, and our incarnation might be like a drop in the ocean or like a wave on the ocean, but the reality is we are the ocean. And the wave, it doesn't last long, you know, it, it travels a while and then it uh, washes up on the beach or the rocks and then it's finished. But the ocean that we are, it's not done. That's the ultimate reality, okay? So if we start with the premise that we are that, we are infinite consciousness, we are the ocean, we are the undifferentiated suchness. Underneath, that's what is. That's what everyone is. All is one. No one even exists separately. So we don't have any of these things about who's better or who's higher on the chain of hierarchy or any of that rot. That doesn't exist at the ultimate level of true identity. Okay, now, we've established that, right? So ground yourself in that. Go into your heart, because I'm going to get weird on you. I'm betting that a whole heck of a lot of us have been, you name it, we have been insectoids, we have been Andromedans, Syrians, we've been humans, we've been, hello, are you ready for this? Are you seated? Got your seatbelt on? We have been reptilians, okay? We have been clouds, we have been mountains, we have been whatever we wanted to be. We have been on the good side, we have been on the dark side, we have danced back and forth and back and forth Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, okay? Been there, done that. Now, that's one of the reasons we're all rising up here. We're all ascending in consciousness. We've really played this game to the hilt, okay? But we've got to stop identifying with just this one body, just this one incarnation. And if you just want to identify with a lot of human ones on this one planet, well, that's okay, but you're still limiting yourself. Okay? So that's your choice. That's fine. I got nothing against it. Everyone's a sovereign being in my world, and they get to make their own choices, their own decisions. All right? But you might want to give a listen anyway and, and just consider because there will be various bits, parts, and pieces of your experience there, your identity, that will arise that won't make sense in terms of just this lifetime, just human lifetimes. I remember one time um, I went into a, uh, a meditation and it was so fascinating when I, uh, I, I don't remember the fullness of the meditation, but what I remember is coming out of it and looking at the earth and the way we live life here and thinking, oh my God, this is the stone age. This is so primitive. I can't believe it. You know, we've got to use these things to get around in that pollute the planet. And, and it was just, it was, well, it wasn't sickening but it was shocking at, the, at how primitive we are even with our space race and all that. I mean the testosterone and those the, the way we send rockets up, come on. Ah, uh, that's men gone wild. But anyway, okay, so we've, we've been lots of places, my friends, and uh, you can incarnate things that aren't biological. And so we have lots of experience to call upon, but 
you kind of got to see it before you can realize it and be it. You might get little bits, pieces, and hints of this and that now and then, but if you have no context for it at all, it's, it's hard to fit those pieces into yourself. And this is really pretty important in a way because, see, we're coming together as we rise in consciousness and as we're dealing with all of our crap that's being flushed to the surface by all this extra light and energy hitting the planet, hitting us, then we're, we're doing some healing there. We're working through the crap and part of the thing that we're healing of is beliefs and limits, the limitations that we've placed on ourselves and we've used time to do that big time you know and time is no limit time might exist sure but it's also simultaneous and so we're not limited we're really not and uh, as we're coming together as we're healing as uh, we're doing soul retrieval some of us you know there's different ways to look at this but we're integrating with higher self with more of self maybe even with lower self, come on, with the subconscious, with the unconscious. We're just becoming more conscious and hopefully more self-aware. As you're doing that, you're going to be, if you're at all like me, you're going to be running into some previous incarnations that are going to show up. And if you're into this particle stuff instead of the wave stuff, uh, you might not recognize that that's another you there that's uh, come to say hi and take a look at you and uh, it's been a real blessing when I've had these various experiences whether seeming to take place from being inside the one that I was you know having the experience as if that was me or whether having the experience as another incarnation just kind of like coming to visit I journaled that recently. I don't know if I've posted it yet. If not, it'll go up in the next couple of three days. Uh, but what I have found to be a big blessing in my experience so far is to welcome that one and say, hey, I'm the future you. And look at this heart. Welcome. Welcome. Come in and see. We made it. We did it. Look what you did. Look what you contributed to. And there's a relaxation that's that's very, it, it's extraordinary. Okay, when you stop and think about what it's like to live a lifetime, to search for truth your whole life, and, and at the end of it, not really feel like you attained. Maybe to be disappointed in yourself, or in your path, or in your church, or in your method, whatever it was. And so there's an unsettledness that you take into the death there and uh, a kind of a feeling of being incomplete. And that very feeling can be healed by integrating like this with these other incarnations. Now, I, I really don't know what anyone else's experience is. This isn't something I've come out and, and talked about much. Uh, but thus far I have found in my journey whatever I share I find that it, it it's resonating with people's experience in other words I'm not the only one for this that or anything um, when we get to the underlying consciousness remember we're the ocean we're the same thing we're nothing separate distinct or different at all but it's kind of fun playing around with the differences I mean why else would we do it huh it's got to have some kind of net gain, and although the mental mind is incapable of calculating this or, or reckoning it in any way, so what? You know, that's not who and what we are. We're not limited to that. So, I want you all to practice being a reptilian. Okay? You're going to take big steps. They're going to be heavy. You're going to kind of not move your hips so much so you know you're gonna kinda of wiggle your butt and I want you to shake that tail back there and I want you to just really have some fun with it and get out of this sense of having prejudice against any kind of being whatsoever 
That's my hope. That's my desire. Prejudice is prejudice, folks. You know, how many of, of the, the ones that you hate have you met with and conversed with? And how much of their history do you know and have you studied? And how much understanding, you know, do you realize that when we have prejudice, we're just projecting ourselves onto others? That's not in them. That's our shadow we're projecting there. And until we can take in and absorb back our own projections and start realizing this, well, the earth isn't going to be in as good a shape as she can. She really can be if we start becoming more self-aware. Now, I'll put in another plug for Dimitri Halley. He's very helpful with this kind of thing. Not that he talks about ETs or reptilians. I'm not going there. I mean, I am going there and he's not going there, but you know what I mean. Um, that's, that's not his message, but working with the shadow, um, that's the best place that I've found so far. Um, it's just wonderful. Okay, maybe I've talked myself out here. I told you it would be rather strange, but you know, if, if you're uh, not quite ready to practice being a reptilian, then practice being a, a spider being or a, a mantis being or a cat person. You know, wag your tail. Let's get over this prejudice against other forms of life, my friends. Love to one and all, even the reptilians among us. Yay! Bye-bye. <laughs>